strong day. Thank you. Hope everybody's had a good week. We got some people out this morning that's working. So we miss them this morning. Pastor Mike. I just want to thank God this morning that we're all able to be here. We got a lot of people that have some sickness this morning, so remember them in prayer. God knows the needs this morning. I just thank God for what He's doing. He's doing a lot beyond what we can even see. But we know in the Spirit that things are moving. We can't look at things in the natural and say, oh, this is all it is. Because God's always working. He's always on time. He's always doing things that we don't know what he's doing, but we always find out because he's always got us on track. If you want to be on track, you can be on track. And if you don't want to be, he's got a way of snatching you in sometimes. Come the hard way or the easy way. That's right. Um, just want to tell you, um, Pastor Phil Privet will be with us. Memorial um, Day weekend, Sunday morning. But um, if you can, try to be here. If you've got plans, we understand. He knew that when we said about having him here. But he was going to be in town anyway, so he was going to stop by here on Sunday morning. So I'll put that on the calendar if you're going to be in town. But I just want to thank God this morning. We have so much to be thankful for. There's so much going on in this world, and he keeps us daily and nightly, all day, all night. And I thank him for that. There's so much going on. Just be in prayer over the city. You know, there's so much happening, and you just wonder sometimes, God, you know, you could fix all this in a day, in a second. But there's reasons that he doesn't. So just pray for people in the cities that, in this day that we're living in, that they will turn to God at some point. People have reasons for, for stuff that they do, and, and they don't even know. They have so many voids inside, and they take it out in all these different areas, and being mad with people and everything else. You know, they just need prayer. They just need to find Jesus. Yes. You know? I pray over the city. I tell you, I know that God sent us here. And in some some ways, it looks like things are moving kind of slow. But I think God's preparing us. Because I believe there's a lot that's going to be coming our way. And that we need to be prepared. And it says be instant, in season and out of season. You never know what you're going to have to face. And who you're going to have to face. There's so many people that need us. And we need them. You know. But just pray that God's going to send us the people that he wants us to have. People that we can help. People that can help us. That we can. I just. This city is in such a bad shape. I mean Rocky Mountain is really, really dark. There's a lot of darkness over this city. And I believe that's why God put us here because He wants His light to shine. Yeah. And I believe a lot of them are going to come. So just keep, just keep that in your mind, just to pray over this city. And you know, we just, we can talk about it, talk about it being bad and everything, but we need to pray. We just need to pray. Amen. And God bless you this morning, and thank you for coming and being here just worshiping this morning with us. Dancers ready. Just worship with them, okay? God bless.
anybody identify what I'm talking about this morning? He's moved mountains. Only He could do. He's blessed you, but no one else can bless you. Now let's just give God a hand clap. A lot of guys are working this morning. But this is a prophetic moment in your life. You really need to listen today. If you don't listen next Sunday or the Sunday after that or whenever, which I know you will listen. But today is a pinnacle day in your life. Because today is a, a prophetic day. God said this is a day that if you listen today, it will change you for the rest of your life. Now, how many need that today in your life? Come on. We all, we all play with each other. I mean, honestly, I play with God. I've done up. I've done down. I've done sideways. I've done this way. I've done it all. And let me tell you what happens. It don't, none of it work if you don't know Him. So we can come in here and play the games. We can come in and say, Thus saith the Lord. We can come in here and shout and pray. But you ain't no power for you all by yourself. But when you're in the crowd, ain't nobody know what you got. Well, everybody's screaming. But when you walk out those doors and go home, that's when you know what you got. Because is he coming there to visit you? Now, today is a great day in God. The first thing we want to do this morning. Now, I appreciate the church. I know what God has done for us here. I know God gave He sent me here. Sometimes I wonder did he send me here. Sometimes I wish he had to send me here. Can we be real this morning? Oh, see, I'm going to tell you something. This ain't easy. Come on. I said, well, God, why did you pick me? He said, because you can do what I can do. I want done because the crookedness is out of you. I ain't trying to shaft nobody. Either you is or you ain't. I tell you God all the time. Just like this right here. God, if you don't send what we need, we won't make it. And if your presence ain't here, we can't take it. Did you hear what I said? If you don't send what we need, we won't make it. But if you don't send your presence, we can't take it. There's territory that's being took today in the kingdom of God. If we look around at numbers, we say, well, we're just getting by. No, we're not. I'm not, I'm not basing this on numbers. I'm basing this on God. Because God speaks. He speaks. And God has blessed me. I'm not tooting my horn. But He has blessed me to hear Him. I hear Him a lot. I want to tell you that this morning. Now, the first thing we're going to do this morning, uh, we're going to pray for people that's got problems. Now, my mom's not here this morning because they took cancer out of her shoulder. We want you to pray for that. Now, they say they got it all. I believe they have. Now, I don't know what you believe. Some of you, and I'm not, I'm just going to say it this way. Some of us like to come in here on this level. Some of us like to come in on this level, this level. But whatever level you come in at, he's real. And he will answer you if you're real with him. And guess what? He will do things to set you up, to mess you up, so you will know him. Because everybody says, you know, Jesus is walking around chitty chitty. Okay, when you don't know the Jesus I know, because he does that, but he got another side you don't want to meet. Because I've met some of it and it ain't pretty. He knows how to spank you. Anybody ever been spanked by the Holy Ghost? Amen. Well, we got to, has anybody ever been spanked by the Holy Ghost? Come on, man. Don't be ashamed to tell it. Because he will, he ain't, he will get some of it. You ever, anybody ever been to the woodshed? Anybody ever had your mama and daddy whoop you out back? Well, I have. It ain't pretty. It's not pretty. But this morning is a pivot moment in our life. Now, listen to what I'm getting ready to say, and I'm going to say it again. We want to, We just want a, a few people this morning. So, Jasmine, you come in and just tell the people what this church means to you. 
can you come this morning? We're going to have some other people come. And you say, well, why is he doing it? Because, see, I want you to understand what you're sitting in. You ain't just sitting in the middle. You ain't God when you believe it or not. <coughs> some of us this morning like we got wrong by a bottle. Or a But guess what? He's real either way. How many believe God? Amen. How many believe in God for the extraordinary? Amen. Okay. Just take a minute and tell them. Good morning, everyone. It is so awesome to be here. The day, the first day I came to this church over in the fellowship hall, my mind was pondering and wondering. My husband had came before I did, and he said that uh, this, the first Sunday he came, he uh, he said that he got a word from the Lord, and he said that he is supposed to be here. So I asked him a question. I said, are we really supposed to be here? And he said, I am. He said, you need to pray and see if this is where you need to be. That's where my, heart, my husband is. That's where I want to be. So I prayed. And God gave me an answer in just a few days. And I found out this is where I was supposed to be. And the day that I came here, it was like within a couple of days, I had like grown, really grown in the ministry. Where I came from, it's like I had got stagnated. It was to the point where I didn't really want to go to church anymore. I just seemed like I was just going in a circle, in a motion. But since I've been here, it's just like I have really grown and and where we are at right now, God is doing some awesome and mighty things. And I just thank him for what he have done in my life in a short period of time. And God is just awesome. I, I can't even begin to tell you all that God has done in my life since I've been in this church. And I've seen many of us, and like my sister, we, we both have grown because... I know she had grown because when I first came over here, she wasn't going to come, but in, in a few days after walking that came, she was coming, and then Rose came, and I'm like, you know, man, people see what's going on in this church, so they'll begin to come, and uh, another family of ours, friend of ours that came last week, they're coming back, they came last Sunday, but they're coming back as well, but I just want y'all to know this is a good ministry, a good place to be. And I know that I have grown since I've been here and I love this ministry. And I'm here to do whatever God has for me to do to help this ministry grow. And I want y'all to know I love each and every one of you. And whatever I can do for you, let me know. Thank you. Amen. 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 So we're, we're not rushing this morning, so if you're in a hurry <laughs> to get a chicken, you better cancel him this morning. Chicken devil is over in just a few minutes. <laughs> so, praise God. Uh, I just want to thank the Lord for this ministry. Um, there's a time now that things are starting to shake. Things are getting rocky everywhere you turn, even in our own lives. The Lord is trying to get our attention. To stop dabbing with him because he's in a posture he's not playing anymore he don't want us playing church he wants us he wants us to let go of things that we've been holding on for years and years and with, it's all right it's always worked he's always let me go let me slide that's over right because he's fixing the nail of some of you to the wall there you go praise god's a good thing yeah, it, it is. I mean, it, and that's including myself. Over the past year, I've had to let go of a lot of things, a whole lot of things. And he cleanses you through it. He will get angry with you if you don't. Because some of us, he's been telling us, stop doing this, stop doing this. We're not listening. And he's going to tell you, he's going to give you an ultimatum. You stop, or I'm going to raise havoc on you. Okay. It's getting that serious because this ministry has been handpicked by God to go across the oceans, to go across the United States and the South America, to Europe, to Canada, 
It's going to move and you're going to see it soon. It's coming. It's coming, Pastor. Praise God. You're going all over the world. It's already like prophesied. Nothing can stop it. It may hinder it, but nothing's going to stop it. You're going to be the mother of all nations. God has handpicked you to do that. Wow. Just like Sarah was. He can trust you. The Lord saying, I can trust you with everything. With everything. My heart's with you. My hands are upon you. Praise God. Amen. Come on, lift your hands. Father, thank you for the healing in her body right now. It's got to go. Yes, Lord. Thank God. Command it to leave. Yes, Lord. My shield take place in this body right now. Lost the last thing of the Lord. In front of you, has got the spirit that's to leave you, Lord. Thank you, thank you. Give me praise. That's enough. Thank you, Father. Amen. Jesus, thank you. I just want to give y'all thanks for what y'all do. Nobody sees what y'all do and how y'all pray in your closet when you're at home, when you're riding down the road. What you do for this place. It's a sacrifice. And everybody comes in here on Sunday. Come in here and praise the Lord with you. Don't know what you're going through and what you're walking through. The hell that you have to go through to make this happen every Sunday. I want to thank you. Praise God. Thank you. Hallelujah. You turn this down just a little bit because it's going to lose me. That's all right. I knew you were going to call on me. Oh, you did? Well, did you hear you stay? <laughs> this ministry. I was just talking to Miss Cat earlier. She prayed for my husband and I um, about how I've been in a place recently where I don't even recognize myself anymore. Your yes. I don't know for sure if you two even realize the magnitude of your yes from that hotel room in Tarboro to the church in Tarboro to here. God has done a mighty work in so many of us, but we still have some ways to go. Hallelujah. One of the, the greatest things that I can say about where I am now and how this ministry has changed me is mindset. Amen. There you go. I think it was Pastor Field who talked about are you a thermometer or are you a thermostat? So each day now I wake up knowing that today is going to be a great day Amen. in God. That I have the victory in him. No matter what comes against me. No matter what goes on around me. That my focus is on him. Not on the problem, but on the problem solved. That we can just get to a place in him. That every day that we wake up, we don't concentrate on what's going on around us. But we keep our focus on him. Praise God. You see, when Peter got out of the boat. And the distractions came, the waves and the wind. He began to put his focus on the waves and the wind. And what happened to him, he began to sink, right? But God said, keep your focus on me. And when his focus was on God, he was able to walk on water. That's a word for somebody. Keep your focus on him. This ministry has done so much for me, for my household. Wow. If you only knew, some of you did, but if you only knew where we came from and where we are now. And I know God is still doing a mighty work in us. Holy Spirit speaks all the time, pouring in, pouring in, pouring in. I've never been in a position like this before. Wow. Never in my life. And I just thank God. I just thank Him. Nobody but Him. Yeah. 
and nobody but him. And as you begin to sit here, when you come into service each day, I want you to understand something. We have so much to be thankful for. A lot of us don't even realize it. When you woke up this morning and you took that breath, the breath of life, God gave it to you this morning. When you opened up your eyes, when you were able to move your limbs this morning, when nobody had to, to shower you, brush your teeth, there are people who aren't able to do that. When you are able to see, it's people who are more grateful and thankful that are blind than some of us that can see. But yet we get up and we complain about our problems and the gossip and this and that. But the focus needs to be on him. I watched my aunt die in the hospital. I saw her as she was slipping and I went in the hospital. And, and I'm not even a person that would even go and pray for people like that. That's why I can tell you I know that this ministry has changed me tremendously. Because I normally would pull back. But I told God, I said, Lord, I want to be a willing vessel for you. Whatever you would have me to do, I will do. It's not about me. It's not about trying to uplift me or magnify myself. It's all about him. Amen. And when we get that in our minds, Mm, 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 mm. we'll be so much better. But as I went to pray for my aunt, and I saw her slipping away, and when I went in the room, defeat was all in the room, and I said, enemy, you will not have this day. You will not have my aunt. You will not have her mind. When I went in that room and I began to pray, I didn't even recognize myself. And I told her, no matter what, the each pain that hit her, glory be to God, glory be to God, glory be to God. You continue to praise him even through yeah. your struggles, even through your pain. You continue to give it to him. He's the only one that can change your situation. That's right. Amen. And when I tell you before I left, there was a peace that came over the room. As I touched her, I said, Lord, please give her the peace that surpasses all understanding. And see, I prayed for that peace. So I, I'm at a place right now that no matter how much hell is going on all around me, I don't even acknowledge it. I can't even see that because my focus is on him. I have directed my focus from the problem to the problem solved. Amen. Wow. I just want to say thank you, Pastor. And Pastor Yolanda. Wow. You don't even realize what you've done. Yeah. Your yes has changed so many lives. Yeah. So many lives. Yeah. Great. You guys are awesome. Amen. We love you. Continue to do what you're doing. Continue to follow God. Yeah. Let the Holy Spirit lead you. And Pastor, don't draw back. Whatever he give you to give, continue to give it, no matter how it may feel, to whom ever. That's right. Man. Because it, it's there to purify us, to change us. You constantly preach on mindsets. And receive it. And when, when Pastor says just receive it, what he's telling you is begin to see it before it even happens. To have that faith that no matter what it looks like, That's right. you have it. That's you right. have the victory. Amen. And we have it in him. I just want to say thank you, Pastor. This church means so much to me. It's so much to my husband. We both have changed. We have came from a mighty long way. <laughs> We'll get into a little bit of that Tuesday night Bible study. You guys come on now. So we just been praying and praying and the Holy Spirit have been pouring. You see how she advertised. So get ready. Get ready. Get coming. You know what? I thought people were preaching there for a minute. I said, man, that's what we got a preacher here. I'm very down really. She get ready. I was hoping she's going to go on with it. I'm just going to take my microphone off with it. 
But see, lift your hands right now. See, the reason I did that was <clears throat> your life can be changed if you want. If you don't want it, guess what? If you want to be married, you got a wife, you want to be married, you got to be married. You got to make a choice. If you don't want to be married, you won't be married. If you don't want to work, you don't want to do this, you don't want to do that, guess what? It's all about choices and mindset. If you do not change this mind, we keep saying it's a devil, and I, and I know there is an enemy, and there are adversaries. But let me tell you who the biggest adversary is. It ain't that devil, it's this thing right here. That's right, That's right. amen. It don't start with no D. It don't start with no S. It starts with an M. Yes. Me, right. That's right. Praise God. See, today is a great day in God. Now, I miss the guys this morning because when I look up and don't see a lot of people, I say, God. It's kind of, you know, and then the enemy tried to use that against me and say, yeah, see, you all by yourself. Well, we're back. I ain't by myself, but we all here this morning. But see, today, listen to me. Now, really listen. Today is a prophetic day in the ministry of God. God is doing things that you really don't understand He's doing. Now, I say we won't be on TV. We will be. I know we are. I said, well, God, how do I pay for it? He didn't ask me to pay for it. He said, you just be willing to go when I make the opportunity. And I give you the, the, the place to be. You be on time. He said, because if you're on time, I'm going to be on time. Dude, that's for somebody. If you be on time, he says, I'll be on time. Amen. Now, the other week, you know, Doc Payne came. Now, how many of you Doc Payne? Yeah. Everybody enjoying him? Okay. We got in the back room, and I have a song. I just want to tell you how things change. Now, the week before that, I said, Lord, this man has 59 number one in. I'm not building the man, but good God. How many has he got? He's got 59 number one in. I said, I can give you anything in the world to write a song for him. Didn't know he was coming this Sunday. We knew he was coming. We got in the back room and I threw a little song out there. You know, I thought it was a good little song. We got through. We got a great song. So this coming Tuesday, I want you to pray. Tuesday morning, I think 9.30, 10 o'clock. He's going to be in the studio cutting our song. See, that might, that don't sound up. You might say, what is that? It might not be nothing to you, but it's big to me. Because we few years ago, I didn't have nothing. He said, well, that song's going to be on the charts. See, what I prophesied years ago is happening. Amen. Amen. Now I feel holy kind of stuff. I can start crying right back. Y'all don't get it. Now, I hope we do get it. I say we don't get it, but we do get it. I'm telling you, he's here. Amen. You understand? I'm not laughing at God. I'm laughing with God. I hear God laughing. He said, they don't even understand what you're saying. <laughs> I told you about the time a few weeks back. The Lord said, he's going to give you an airplane. Why do I need an airplane for? He said, because where I'm sending you, you got to have one. Amen. I said, now, can you, what Sunday morning when y'all drive up, there's a plane sitting over here on this building. Don't y'all be shocked. Now, I don't know how it's going to land. They might have to bring on a truck and carry it out of here or whatever. But God said he's going to give me one. It ain't just for me, it's for us. Because there's something you don't understand. You, you want a job, you're going to get a chance to get one. You can work in ministry. Can anybody see yourself working full-time in ministry? Is there anybody here can see yourself? We're not talking about working for $7 an hour. We're talking about making good money. Now, God's opening doors all over the country. And sometimes it overtakes me when I see this stuff. And I say, God, how in the world would it all take place? Now, look around. Do you see what's here? Yes. This one here a few years ago. This was prayed in. Anybody pray for this? Yes. Come on, man. Did anybody pray for this? Don't be ashamed of you breaking this. We got sounds. Did anybody see it? Look at the drums. I think it's pretty. Look at the new thing around the drums. Look at what God does. Isn't that something? You, you might say, well, that's just a three-round drum. 
Uh-uh. That's progress. That's progress. Because see, when I do it, I'm going to do it right. Do I ain't going to mess with it. Because I ain't going to have a punk ministry. They can punk that damn street. They won't be here. We're going to be professional. Now, I say this again. Lift your hands right here and say, Lord, help me this morning. To listen to the pathetic that's been said this morning. Now listen to this statement. The Holy Spirit is the agent to Jesus that lives within you. Do you understand what I just said? Listen. He is the agent. The Holy Ghost is the agent to Jesus that lives in you. Now, if we can grab, and, I, and, I, and I'm, I'm asking God for this. I know God, I hear God, but it ain't enough. Does anybody hear me? I hear God, He says this, He says that, I believe it. But God I said, okay, I believe it. You ain't that more? He said, there's your will. I said, okay, God, you gave us the building, you done this, you done that, is there more? He said, yes. And then He said, do you want it? He's, now, let, let me tell you what's happening in Rocky Mountain. You won't believe what I'm getting ready to make this statement. God has come to this place many times. Nobody will answer the call. Come on. Now, listen. They, I'm not talking out of my head. I'm talking out of the realm of the Spirit. you got to hear me this morning. i got the Holy Ghost on me. And you should have the Holy Ghost on you. I'm telling you, God has brought the Spirit of the Lord to Rocky Mount. And He says, ain't nobody hardly hearing me in Rocky Mount. He said, because they will not answer the true call. Come on. Amen. That's why our people are killing themselves in Rocky Mount. They're stealing, they're breaking in the house. Because ain't nobody got the real Holy Ghost to stand up and let's kill this thing for one time and all. We try to come up with programs to fix the problem, but we never tell them that Jesus is the answer. You understand that? You try to send him to one point, two point, three point, and when he gets there, he stays 30, 60 days, and gets out to do the same stupid thing again, because he ain't got no Holy Ghost in it to keep him. That's right. Oh, yeah. Do you understand that this morning? Now, God said to me, because I had a lady, we had a situation happen in Greenville, North Carolina, and I would not prophesy to the lady at Wendy's. We went to Wendy's, I told myself, I don't like Wendy's, I want to go to McDonald's. And everybody's mad in the truck. I said, I want some McDonald's french fries, I don't want no Wendy fries, but I hate them. They suck. I said, we all want to go to Wendy's. I'm already mad. <laughs> so what I'm going to do is stop y'all going to get you up, and I'm going to eat a pack of nails. Well, I'm mad. So we got there, and I'm telling you this to tell you this. We got there, I said, okay, I'm going to get a burger. I'm mad. They said, can I help you? I'm thinking, not really. And I was getting ready. You got any McDonald's fries like that? Well, I'll take them. But, so we're sitting there eating, this lady comes in, and the spirit, and now I'm already trying to eat her, and I'm already here. And the Lord said, tell her that I love her. I said, this is what I said, you tell her, I ain't telling nobody nothing. I said, because I'm mad with my french fries I didn't get from McDonald's. <laughs> Am I telling the truth, Mark, And then, and the drummer said, what's wrong with you? I said, because I'm mad. He said, what you mad about? I said, because y'all didn't want to go to McDonald's. <laughs> and see, now I feel like I'm about three years old. Father. I want my way. It's going to be my way or going to get out of the truck. But I went with my wife because she the boss. <laughs> so the lady said there, she came in, two ladies. And the Lord said to me, he said, go tell her I love her. I said, I ain't telling her nothing. You want somebody to tell her, you tell her. He said, well, you should talk about it. No, I'm just mad. You get at you, you'll say a lot of things. And then a few minutes later, you say, oh, God, what she ain't said it. That's right. So I get a, I, I eat my hamburger. The Lord said, go tell her I love her. I said, I ain't going to tell her nothing. 
I get out of my truck, I slam the door. I said, you ain't gonna tell him? I said, the Lord told me to tell that woman. And my wife said, you better go tell him. I said, I ain't telling that woman nothing. Then my wife said, go ahead, big boy. I got out of the truck then. I was standing by the truck and I take the door and I just slam it. I said, okay, I'm going to tell her. But I don't want to tell her. So I walk in there and as she said, I said, ma'am, you don't know me. I said, but the Lord said, thus saith then, she just broke. The other lady said, he's right on it. So I went to tell her about her life. She had lost her. She didn't even have up with the clothes she had on her back. So we blessed, I think we blessed her. I said this, said this, and this. But that won't, that won't keep her. All of it was great. Now when I got to my truck, this is what God said. I'm making this a point. He said, I've been trying to get her word to her all day. Nobody else would listen. He said, I've spoke to other people, but they wouldn't tell her. And I said, Lord, forgive this idiot, this fool that wanted McDonald's French fries. I didn't realize he sent me there on a mission to give that lady something. The only way she was going to get it, I had to tell her. Now, I'm telling you today, you don't understand this, and even though we do to a point, God wants to touch your life and make it like better than it ever was before. That, and the message this morning, if you want to name that, there is an open door that's opening right now as I'm talking for you to get what you need. Amen. Yes. God says he has no problem. Listen, this is God speaking. This is the Spirit of the Lord. He says, I have no problem you coming to me telling me what you need because I want to hear you say it. He said, because I already know what needs to be said, but I want you to say it so I can move upon it. Hallelujah. Anybody hear me this morning? Yeah. Now, the Holy Spirit is the agent to Jesus that lives within us. We have a resurrection power on the inside of us that that lives on that we can live on earth. But God said, I just don't want you to live on earth. I want you to, you to live like you already in heaven. Yeah, that's right. Amen. Some of us are living in the light because of situations. Some of us are living in life because of a bad situation and bad choices. God says, I can redeem that in one day. That's right. Anybody believe me? Yeah. Is there anybody here believe that God can change your circumstances? Yeah. 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 Huh? Yeah. Now, now listen to this statement. You are, how do you believe that really? When I ask this question, I talk to me and my wife. I know we're successful. I'm not bragging on me and her. I'm bragging on Jesus that's in my life. It's the way I can fail. How can I fail if the man lives in me? It's the way I can be broke. It's the way I can be sick. It's no way this. It's no way that. Even though I might have the symptom, he is the problem solved. Has God done a miracle for somebody? Look at Mama sitting back here. God, what did the doctors tell you? They said, oh, what did God say? Come on. What? Oh, <laughs> <laughs> you hear this morning, ain't you? Huh? Ain't you still kicking it off? You might not be kicking as high as the money, but guess what? You will kick high. Come on. <laughs> That your husband's standing in the portals of glory, your daddy's standing in the glory, of going to Jesus back home. Said, you know, oh, she gets mad, Lord. She'll throw a temper. Is that count? Is that you? He said, you know, she 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 goes off like a light bulb. Right, right. But the thing about it, see, he goes before God and says, touch my daughter and touch my wife. Yes. yes. You don't think you're still married, ain't you? <laughs> in the Holy Ghost, he ain't gave up on you. Amen. Do you realize I could not do this without God? Yes. Yes, God. I was one of those guys in school. You know, I'm going to tell y'all something. They said, they tried to put me in a special class, but they said I was stupid. 
They didn't know I just didn't give them poop. They didn't, I was stupid. I just didn't care. To my dad, he spanked my hot box. <laughs> I used to raise all kinds of hell in class. In, in third grade, right enough, to my dad, the lady come and met my daddy in the milk truck and told me, something wrong with Marvin. <laughs> daddy said, don't worry, when he come back tomorrow, I'm going to fix this problem. He beat the holy hell out of me. He beat me like, I said, my God. The lady come out the next day and said, he's an angel. What did you do? this? said, I beat the holy hell out of me. You said, now somebody gonna see this and say, he cussed. I'm not, I'm trying to tell you. Let me tell you something. That's the people they the reason why those kids are crazy, because they go like put a bell on your heart. But if you do it wrong, you're gonna get mad. We want to put it in time out. My daddy knocked me out in time out. <laughs> so some of you get mad, but we ain't supposed to do that. But let me tell you something. You would have half the problem That's if you right. think of mine. about that 31 years old. Let me tell you something. When she was born, I grabbed by the arm like this right here. And I changed from Jessica to Jessica Lynn. She done all over. <laughs> he done changed. <laughs> Don't need that long for somebody to get mad. <laughs> but listen to this thing. You are a success going somewhere to succeed. Amen. Amen. Does anybody know where you're going? I am a success. You need to, come on, everybody. If you believe this, now if you don't believe me, I ain't talking to you. But if you're a success, take your hand and put it right here and say, I'm a success, success, going somewhere to succeed. I'm going to go, I'm going to succeed where anybody likes to lie. If everybody walks out of this church and I got an empty building, God still won't do what he said he did. But we don't want that. We want you to come with us. Do you understand that? Yes. Everything that's been said this morning is to change your mind mm -hmm. and give you a perfect mindset. Everybody needs to do this right here. Put your hand right here and say, God, God. help my mind help to my become mind. pathetic yes. in Jesus. Yes. See, I'm not telling you, when I get to heaven, I won't need all this. I need, I need it to work here. Yeah. I need a good marriage here. Yeah. Huh? Now, she said it's changed our life. Guess what? You, ain't gonna, you might not believe this, but I believe you will be. It's changed our marriage. Oh, I said, Lord, it ain't me, it's done. I said, what are you doing? You don't need to pull that middle. <laughs> but really, to be honest with you, it wasn't her. What if she is? I made her that way. Cause I'm a crazy. Come on. See, some of you don't realize this. You don't have to do nothing. Your words will kill a person's spirit. Yes. That's right. You can say the wrong thing to a person. You better off sometimes just knock them out. Cause they get past it. But see, when you crush their spirit with words, it takes a long time. Yeah. And how many women can really forget? Got one. Thank God for one. Most women don't forget. They don't forget it. It takes God to forget it. And have you ever that? Some guys have been abused by women. It takes a long time for them to forget it. That's right. Let's balance that thing, man. Because I've met some crazy women. And if I was seen, Ain't no way. I don't care if God had 25 angels stood the best and that's your wife. I'm running. I'm leaving Dodge. But I ain't gonna be mad at that. Now listen to this. You are a success so I'm going somewhere to see. I have how many believe you're the righteous of God? Amen. Well we got a few. Amen. Help me, Lord. Let's take a break. I, you didn't hear. I know you. The reason why we got that response like that because nobody didn't hear it. I am the righteous of God. How many believe you're righteous? This morning? Yes. Come on. Do you really believe you're righteous? Yes. I don't care what you're going through. 
If you cuss two minutes ago, you're still righteous. Because God don't see that. Because he does that, we all be dead. That's right. If God judged you by your junk, you wouldn't be standing here sitting here this morning. He wouldn't be here this morning. I'm telling you, everybody will already be in hell, probably died, went off, been killed, prosecuted. Huh? That's the truth. Yes. That's why I have problems with these guys on TV. They promote Jesus like he's a commodity. And people buy into that. They'll tell you how great God is and go, go, and go right over somewhere else and tell something totally different. My, what I'm telling you, I don't change it outside those doors. Amen. You meet me on Monday, I'll tell you the same thing. Might better tell you a little more because he might give us some more revelation. That's right. Because I'm not going to change what I'm saying. Amen. To get some money. Amen. If he don't send the money, we ain't going to have no money. Amen. And if she don't give me no honey, I ain't going to get no honey. You got the honey? <laughs> you heard what she said? She said, I got yours. <laughs> Praise God. <laughs> Praise God. <laughs> My God, I'm going to praise God. <laughs> and look, I'll tell you what I'm going to do. I'm going to tell you what I'm going to do. I just really believe we need to praise God. <laughs> wow. <laughs> My God, I feel a kiss coming on. <clears throat> wow. I feel, I'll tell you what. Woo! I feel excited when she said, I got your honey. I was going to let you stop. See, some of you would, you know, if you did that, if you did that more, your life would be changed. And guess what? Some of you would be ill as you is. Yes, <laughs> Why did I say that? That's why you ill. Lord Jesus. Do we, we, is anybody saved to this Do you chase around the house? Tell the truth, man. You do. I, well, you probably lift your hands and say, God, I'm chasing. Yeah, I'm, I'm chasing too. Good. Anybody that's married, you chase your wife, lift your hand. I chase my wife around the house. I don't care what she got on God, if she ain't got no makeup, I'm still, I'm still chasing her. She might have that granny gown on, but I'm still going to chase her. Wow. Can, can you understand what I'm trying to tell you? Do you understand? God wants you to live in the fullness of what He gave you. Yes. Amen. Huh? Amen. I didn't. Yes. Yes. Very, very. Yes. Very, very. Wow. I need to know what's in me. Turn your Bibles to Romans 8, 8 chapter. Let's just go on. We're going to go through this here. We, I'm going to spend 20 more minutes and then we're going to. Romans the 8th chapter. Let's, let's rock this thing, okay? Romans the 8th chapter. Just turn right there. I'm going to read some scriptures real quick. Does anybody understand what I'm trying to tell you this morning? Your life will change if you believe God. Huh? I'm in a building today because I believe God. I got it. God gave us quit because I believe God. He didn't just give it to me. He gave it to you. You own just as much of the this as I do. This is not mine. This is ours and God's. 8 chapter, 11 verse. Read it. Let's see. Let's run to it. 8 11. This is what it says. But if the Spirit of the Lord, no, it's the Spirit of Him that rises, raises up Jesus from the dead, dwelleth in you, He raises Christ from the dead, shall also quicken your mortal bodies by the Spirit that dwelleth in you. Do you understand something this morning? Everybody in this place, if you understood what He did, you've already been quickened in the Holy Ghost. Amen. Amen. I didn't write this. Do you realize that? You listen, I have been quickened by the Holy Ghost. Anybody feel quickened? Yes, uh, what changed? Let me tell you what's changed you is the quickening of God. Yes. Amen. Now, you already see where you are in God right now, you two guys, right? Jesus. You might not be able to take it. What are you gonna do? What are you gonna do when it, when it overtakes you? Yes. 
And that's what he's trying to get you to. He wants you to spill over so you can give it to somebody else. Amen. Anybody believe that this morning? Yeah. Okay. Now, let's, let's roll on. Let's, let's go on. Let me see what I got this morning. Okay. Now, you say, well, he ain't saying a whole lot. Probably ain't. You got to listen. Now, the Lord said to me this morning, this is a prophetic day in God. You won't believe even the ones that couldn't make it this morning. This is for them. Amen. There's an open door in this church for you to have what you need. Yeah. God said, tell them. There's an open door. Everybody say open door. Open door. Okay. Now, Revelation, read, uh, turn your Bible to Revelation 3.8. Revelation. And I don't ever talk out of Revelation because this has got to be God because I don't ever go to Revelation. Because I know a lot of people, they stay in Revelation for enough of <laughs> But that ain't me. Now, turn your Bibles to Revelation 3 and let's turn it to the 8th verse. We're still in the 8th verses. Okay? Now, Revelation 3, 8 says this. And this is great writing, so I didn't write this. God wrote this. Okay? I know the works. Listen, I know thy works. Behold, I have uh, set before thee. Anybody know what God has set before you? God has set this ministry before us to do something in Rocky Mount that will change this place. That's devils in Rocky Mount that's not afraid of the preachers. Amen. That's demonic. That's demons in Rocky Mount. And you and I don't talk about it. That's devils in Rocky Mount that need to be touched. That's right. Because ain't nobody else touched. Now, when you touch them, they're going to try to touch you back. But you better have some Holy Ghost. Because when you start spanking that hiding, He wants to come back and spank you. Come on. Do you understand that? That's right. Huh? That's why this place ain't changed. Come on. I'm not afraid of a devil. Anybody afraid? Come on. If you, how many got the Holy Ghost? Why should I be afraid of a devil when God lives in me? And He says, I'm the overcomer. He ain't. See, there's a power here this morning to let you know that there ain't no devil in hell can defeat you. Yeah. You understand that this morning? That's right. Huh? Yeah. God says to me, He says, I set this before you. If you stay in line, stay in line with me, there ain't no Bible can bite you because I got you covered. Thank you, Lord. That's why He said, they can come, they can't come now by dwelling. Yeah. Whatever I dwell at, he can't come down. Yeah. He might stand in the wonder room. He might stand at door. But guess what, big boy? You can't come in. Because you can't stand the presence of the true God. Because when the true God comes in, it kills everything around it. That's right. Does, do I make sense this morning? Yeah. Does it sound like I'm saying anything? Yeah. Huh? Watch Revelation, let's go back there. I know that works. Behold, I have set before thee an open door. There is a door this morning that ain't nobody can shut it but God. But God says, I won't shut that door because I open that door for your opportunity to know me. You can't come through this door thank you know him. You can't come through this door off of somebody else. You got to know him for yourself. But what's in you? Amen. Now this message is good enough this morning if you want to say it. It should be the overall world. Because everybody I see on those TV is playing Jesus. Come on. They're playing a the game. Amen. It's like the other day on Facebook. I look at Facebook and there stand two men and this is the new suit. I'm getting a, a shirt with high heels and a, and a top, and this is the new suits for the men. Are you crazy? You make me want to cuss. You think Marvin Harold ain't going to wear a dress with a coat, and this, I'm going to look like that. I can tell you, you won't ever sell me one. And that's the fashion. Uh, if that man right there, I love that man, if he come in with a skirt on, and he got a blouse on and high heel. He, he can't play piano. <laughs> he ain't no way to go. I don't care how good he is, he can't play no piano. Right. We're going to bring him to the altar and dunk him with 2050 till he gets his own life. <laughs> Which I ain't worried about that hat. I just shoot that. <laughs> this thing 
thing is messed up. Right. What the world is trying to do is they try to listen. Now they say they don't want to use the word man. What? Don't teach it to the kids. What? Yeah, we don't want the man. We don't want the man to be a man anymore. We don't want him existing because if he don't exist, we can have anything in the church and in the world. Because the man stands for something in God. Come on. Huh? So what you want to do, we don't want to teach man. We want to teach him whatever they say they is, that's what they is. Can you believe it? And then we, we run around shout and the whole world got going to hell because you're the punk in God. You're scared of saying, I'm not afraid to stand for the truth. Amen. And sometimes you gotta stand by yourself. That's right. Because ain't nobody hard gonna stand with you. Right. Nobody gonna stand with you because when it gets thick Come and your ribs start to cut, they're gonna walk off and leave you. Come on, man. That's what he done to Jesus. Come Jesus said, well, hey, I'm cool. can y'all pray for me one hour? Well, yeah, but we're gonna go to sleep. <laughs> okay, let's go. Open door. And no man can shut it. Do you read this in red? He says, no man can shut this door. For thou has a little strength, and has kept thy, my word, and has not denied me my name. How many believe that this morning? Amen. Now, but when God opens this door, it's not just a door. He's talking about a door of the supernatural that anything can happen. Yes. Do you understand that this morning? Yes. Stand up, man of God. Listen to what I'm getting ready to tell you. I can cry. There's so much glory on you. You might not see this. But God said He's fixing to indwell you with the glory of God. You don't understand. It don't make no difference what, what, when, where, what, what, what. You gotta understand. You're fixing to walk in the glory of God. Huh? Huh? I don't care what nobody said. They talk about me. Let me tell you something. They talk about me. And you. They can go to hell. You understand that? It's good they talk about me. It's good they talk about me. I just got called a racist. I just got called in. I got called a cop leader just a couple weeks ago. Praise God. Thank you for the free advertisement. I ain't got to pay for it. Because now I just want to in. I was smart enough not to lose my temper. I said, God, bless them. Yes. That's what you should be doing. That's what me and you are going to do together. In Jesus' name, we're going to bless them stupid fools. Yes. So when they get what they got coming to them, they can't take it. Go ahead. Yeah. Based on the message that he's preaching this morning, I'm going back to what God gave me. Some several months ago. For this ministry. And he said, first of all, you gotta hear. Right. The truth. Then you gotta obey. And we are people. That's what he's talking about now. It always comes down to those four entities. And how of us we want to receive that. You got to hear. The Bible says, faith comes by hearing. Hearing by the word of God. It also goes by not hearing. That's the balance. So if you are not in the world, where are your faith coming from? You're either going to have faith for that, this, or the other. What are we going to do? Now for over 400 years, because we keep saying Jesus was born 2,000 years ago. If one year is added to 2,000, it can't continue to be 2,000. It had to keep increasing. That's right. So then, how do we keep saying that same thing? We have done all these years everything that men or man has told us to do. 
When are we going to do what God said? Amen. That's what he's talking about this morning. I know they talk about me. But again, too, guess what? They also talk about Jesus. And it's not because I'm doing something wrong. Most of the time this thing comes from being talked about is because people don't want you to get in their mess. So what are we going to do? Are we going to bow our heads and run? No. Let people keep saying black, white, and the Spirit of God, thank John 4, 24, is a spirit. So if you are bigot, prejudice, whatever, be you black, white, yellow, green, it doesn't matter. God don't dwell there. Amen. And when you come into this ministry, let me say this. You're going to be challenged. That's right. Because first of all, when you come here and touch this thing and think you're just going to run back out, something's going to happen to you. Yeah. I'm telling you now. Something's going to happen to you. And it ain't going to be good. Because you can dip and dab, dip and dab. Every time you need a healing here or you have to go back to where you are, that's not God. I be on my job every day. I'm called a lunatic. But guess what? I don't get upset. Just like Pastor just now said. What are you going to get mad for? What are you going to do? You're going to keep hiding? Everybody's coming out of the closet like the Christians. Come out. We still live Christian but I don't know. The scared of what? You're going to be talking about him. So talk about me for the good. Yeah. For the good. The good in him. Because that's what it's all about, people. Amen. That's what we got to stand for. I'm behind this man. Sometimes I have felt and still do sometimes. What is what, what good is it? When all of us say we love Jesus. But a lot of times we won't stand up and be counted. Some of us won't pray about our food. We come out and sit down and start eating. It just do on the way to just shame. He said, if you are ashamed of me before me, yeah. I'll be ashamed of you before my father. Yeah. Yeah. Why do we do that? Why? Why do we do that? And Jesus has done so much for all Amen. of us. Yeah. People, we can just do what the man said do. He gives you a commanded word. What is wrong with it? Why? Why we won't do that? He tell you go do something. We are so scared. We are so scared. But yet, everybody in this earth on my jobs and everywhere, they taking things. Pastor, I was telling my wife, my retirement, I have been telling her, I've been laughing about it. I've been on my job 30, maybe 31 years. The pension, y'all, people don't even talk about it. But I'm telling you now, you better put some money up. Because your job ain't going to give it to you. It ain't there. It ain't there, y'all. It's ridiculous. 31 years for $2 a month. I'm being funny. But from 0 to 220 to 2500 pick a number. You probably land on it. 0 to 2500 You in there. I've been on my job 31 years. I'm telling you now, you got to say anyone. But that's, that's just a one I always use Pastor for the side show. But people look, Jesus is the way. He is the truth, and he is the life. Amen. God. No man can come unto the Father but by no. him. So I'm going to tell you again, if it ain't about the blood, I don't know what you're doing. Amen. My club, my money, whatever, ain't going to make it, people. They ain't going to give it to you. Yes. Let's get real, y'all. It's about Jesus, the Christ. It's the only one. It is the only way. And we can sit around, we can get mad, we can do whatever. But it's about Jesus. Amen. It's always going to be about that blood. That's the only one. That's the only way you can be saved. It's through the blood of Jesus. I don't care how much money. Where you live, how big your house is. But this house. Yes. This house. Come on. That's what you live in. Yes. This right here is not so safe. Malvin Harold and Pastor Yolanda for this beautiful building. Come but on. guess what? When they come for us, come it ain't for this. Come on. Right. Look, come on. it's what's in here. Yeah. All the thing that he yeah. is going back to him. Yeah. And if you are not right, man, right. you're going to be in the smoke. Yeah. They don't talk about hell. Let me tell you something. Hell is real. If all of us in here don't believe this, go to Luke, the 16th chapter. Read it in your spare time. 
It's real. It's real. And he will start showing some of the signs. He will start saying, you be wondering, what is this? That's what trying to show you going. You don't have Jesus. That's the only way. Everybody is coming out of the mess. Now he's just talking about it on the do away with man. God made man. That's why. Thank you, Holy Spirit. In his image. In his likeness. So why you think they don't want him here? Because it reminds them so much of God. You're the only thing in the earth. Be you black, white, yeah, blue or green. All you come from the moon. He want us. We are his creation. All of us are not his children. That's what people say, but that's a lie. You have to be adopted through Jesus the Christ. We are all his creation. We are all not his children. You can come to church. You can play it as you want. But until you receive that Jesus Christ in your life, you are not a child of the king. You're not. He created all of us. And you can get mad. You do whatever you want. I'm not upset, y'all. I love Jesus. But people, we got to get real. This thing about God is real. I don't know what we've been doing. And I see it every day. On my job, everywhere you go, people upset. They're doing everything you want to do, but I didn't know about this. They're trying to take man out of the thing. Now, what are we going to do, y'all? <laughs> what are we going to do? <laughs> what are we going to do? We'll keep in. All of us in here, ain't just me, as a man. Man, men, that's all of us. That's what they want. If you take them out. And to the point, you see stuff now. And they're just so proud. This is my husband. Mm. <laughs> my husband. I and look, it almost make me beautiful. Yeah, but mean. if that's your thing, yeah, if that's your thing, if that's your thing. <laughs> Hey, you don't look at me like that. <laughs> How do you do that? Don't look at me like that. <laughs> My husband. I ain't your sweetie. <laughs> Y'all, no. Praise God. Jesus, God, and the Holy Spirit. They are one. Praise God. I love them. I love y'all. But I'm telling you right now, <coughs> we as Christians, there's things that's being done that's being taken away from us and we sit around like he just said panicking. It ain't okay, y'all. That's right. It's not. And I don't care what flavor you in, what house you live in, the devil don't care how he can take us out of here. That's right. I didn't know that about the man of oh, God. That's good. Amen. Amen. Thank you. Amen. Come on. Amen. And I ain't get sweetie. <laughs> I can shoot him. Still on. We ain't like it. <laughs> God. I know who his sweetie is. Thank you. And he says, I know the works that behold. I listen, listen, I know by works. Behold, I have not sit before thee. I have sit before thee an open door, and no man can shut it, for thou hast a little strength, and hast kept thy word, and as has not denied my name. Now, now listen to this right here. God says, I have opened a door in the supernatural for things to change. How many need change this morning? How many need your mind to be illuminated by the Holy Ghost? How many are satisfied where you are? Anybody satisfied? I'm not satisfied where I am in God. I've got to have some more. Are you satisfied where you are with God? How about you? You satisfied? Anybody in here, anybody in here satisfied? Because we need to talk after service. So, now listen to this right here. So that means that God has gone before you. Do you hear that? He has gone before me and opened a door that will change my life forever and give me what I need. Does anybody listen, does anybody believe that God wants me to have life? I do not believe God wants me to live in life. God says, okay, I, if I'm living in life, I have got to change the way I'm doing things to get into more of God. That's right. That's people, that's people that come to church. They never pay tithes. Wow. It won't nobody ever help you. 
I'm sorry. I didn't write the book. I tried it. I lost everything I had. All because I thought I was the man. And God said, oh, you do? Well, I'm going to show you who the man is. I went back and repented and started over. Amen. Huh? There's a law and God has set in motion that has to be done so God can give you the Lord. Amen. See, when you say that, if you say, well, what he's trying to do is get my money. Uh-uh. I ain't trying to get your money. I don't need the money. The kingdom of God needs the money. Amen. See, God ain't trying to take something from you. He's trying to get something to you. He extends his hand. Everybody do this right. He extends his hands to me. Yeah. How many needs God to extend his hand to me? Yeah. Huh? Yeah. I ask God all the time. I say, okay, God, if you put me on nationwide TV, how will I talk? How will I do? How will I act? He said, Act the same way you do here in Rocky Mountain. That's right. Because I don't want you to change. Amen. You're going to say the same thing you said in Rocky Mountain if there's five million people looking at you. Amen. Hmm? Yeah. I preached one time like that on TV. I didn't know that. 178 days she translated in every language, and it was six and a half people seeing me say something. Huh? You know why the guy on TV couldn't receive that? Because they thought I was a redneck from Rachel Cole County. They couldn't see me as the man of God. They couldn't see me as Now, how could he have a word? He's from Kompong country. But I listened to the word you had. You didn't say nothing. See, somebody told you that it's seminary. Or sanctuary. Or cemetery. You got yours from the cemetery. I got mine from the spirit of the Lord. Because I know what he said. I know what he's saying on everybody on this side. I know what he's saying to everybody on this side. And that's how he wants us to have the more God. Yeah. Anybody need the more? Yeah. Is there anybody in this place need God to touch you? Yeah. 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 Amen. Huh? There's an open door this morning. A faith door that's open that will change you forever. Yeah. Thank you, Jesus. Let me tell you something. You're going to say, well, this is stupid. I'm going to show you the power of God. You come into church, there's a piece of paper on the floor, you walk by it. I don't walk by it. I pick it up because it disturbs me. But guess what God does? He trusts me with this little piece of paper to put it in the right perspective. He's trusting you with this book to put it in the right perspective. Do you understand what I'm telling you? Everybody in here has got an attitude of something. I've got an attitude. You've got an attitude. But God can change our attitude and give us the attitude. That's right. Does anybody believe that this morning? I got all kinds of things. There's over seven or eight things in this one scripture. Listen, the first thing, He does, God knows what you are doing. Right in this scripture. He knows what you're doing. He knows whether you're real or not. Right. How do you come before the Almighty God and you playing a game with that man? Come on. How do you do this stuff, man? How do you come? How do you come before the Scriptures and use a whole mm -hmm. How can you do it? How can you come before this right here and use a crook? Come on, Amen. How, how can you come before God and you gay? You bring that to God? God says, bring something to me. But that's what you bring in your job? Come on. I'm bringing the word of God. When I bring the word, I get behind the word. The word changes me. That's right. You probably say, well, he's acting like a fool. No, I'm telling you, this word, if you take this word and stand on the word of God, it will illuminate your life forever. That's right, Lord. Do you know there's power in this book? Yeah. Yeah. This ain't hard to romance. This ain't the days of our life and have the world to her. Like Jack, uh, 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 what's his name? Victor. He don't slept with everybody but Jack. <laughs> it was a me any day that he got Jack. <laughs> <laughs> you 
You laugh, but he might got everybody on the show. I ain't coming with you. I don't come here. I come here because I want to be real. I might, you might say, well, he got flawed. Yeah, I do. But I love Jesus. I love God. I trust God. I believe God. I'm, t I'm declaring. God says the man of God in this house, and the other man of God, has the power to declare a blessing over you. Everybody lift your hand. There will be blessings over your life. I declare it because the man of God, God says, you have the power in the word in your mouth to decree it. I decree it in Jesus' name. He backs up everything I say. You won't believe this. He just said, who needs a car? God just spoke to me. Who needs a car? If you need a car, I ain't talking about you got one. I'm talking about who needs a car? I'm talking about who really needs I ain't talking about because you saw one. Because I saw a BMW last night coming back. And I said, I'd like to have it. I told my wife. She said, it was burgundy. About like her car. I saw that thing there. And I said, oh, God, they got three of them. I told my wife. I said, that's my car. She said, honey, do you want me to go get it tomorrow? Uh -oh. No, don't do it. <laughs> don't do it. Even though my heart's desires to have one. But how many need a car? One. Two. Anybody have three? Listen. If you need a car, you better raise your hand right now. Because I'm fixing to declare a blessing coming to you. you better, I'm not playing a game now. The Spashika Basasta Makasta will change it. If you can't get it, whatever, God says, I'll make the way. If you need a car, you need to lift your hands right now. Now, everybody that don't need one, raise both hands. So I know who the ones is and who's those ain't. If that even makes sense in the kingdom of God. God says that. Tell these people right here. If you trust me, You need a car? You got $5 on you? $5. Come and put $5 on that altar right now and watch what he does. Hallelujah. Thank you, God. Thank you, God. Mm -hmm. Who else needed a car? You got $5? Put $5 on the altar plate and I won't spend it. And if he don't give you a car, I'll give you a hundred back. Because I trust him that much. I don't know how he's going to do it. Anybody else got five dollars that wanted a car? You say, well, how? I'm not telling you to buy a car. I'm just telling you to sow a seed so you can reap the harvest. Amen. You better listen to what I'm telling you. If you need a car, lay five dollars on the offer. You say, well, how can five dollars? It ain't the five dollars. It's about being obedient. Yeah. Anybody else? Mommy, did you say you need a car? Have you got five dollars? If you ain't got it, I got it. I give it to you, Mommy. She got it. Thank God for mama. Yes. Huh? You say, well, what, what, what is that about? What is that? I'm going to put it up there. Okay. Okay. It was my choice. Good. Good. Okay, look. Take that file off. You put it up there. It ain't going to do you no good if I put it up there. Because I don't need a car right now. But I mean, if you got throwing that for that BMW, it could be nice. <laughs> Anybody else? Before we declare this. No, you are. Praise God. Now, we're not going to spend this money. We're going to put this money, we're going to hold this money. Because I trust the Lord. Anybody trust? I need somebody that really knows Him that will trust Him with me. Anybody? Can I get somebody to trust me? Trust in that with me. Lift your hands right now. God, I thank you that these people believe what I said and I have declared my track record, God, is real good. <laughs> God, I have declared some stupid stuff. I even declared lockjaw one time and they got lockjaw. And I couldn't believe it because when they told me they got lockjaw, it scared me, God, that I, I could speak that. And they got lockjaw because they were talking about somebody else. But God, I believe the hope of Shukur Basasa yeah. in Jesus' name. God, you're going to move now yeah. on this right here. Yeah. And I declare, God, this is just a seed before the call. Yeah. 
and before God. God says, watch what I do. You won't believe the miracles that's coming. Everybody that is declared they want to call, claim it right now. And not pray for it, don't believe it, receive it in Jesus' name. Now, I didn't know we were going there. I did not know we were going there. Everybody all right? Everybody still safe? Yeah. Okay. So he said, well, he tried to get money. Oh, no, I'm not. I'm trying to get you something. God wants to get you. And he's trying to break that mentality. You got like, I can't do this then. Let me tell you something. If you just sub $5 to get a car, how can, who will buy a car for $5? Because I was trying to get my BMW for $2.50. <laughs> you know, I'll be right there with you, sis. Dragging you on the parking lot, me and you together. Come on, girl. You know, I'll be right there with you, sis. Dragging you on the parking lot, me and you together. Come on, girl. Now, did anybody feel the presence of God? Say, so, so I'm not calling you this up. Do what? He's moving. See, because I'm telling you, there was a door open. It, it's going to shut in just a second to anybody else before that door shuts. That's an open door. Huh? Anybody need something for God this morning? And can come and lay a dollar on that offer plate, on that plate right there and say, God, I know you will do what I asked you to do. Anybody. I ain't telling you to bring 20s and 5s, just, just bring a dollar to it. And watch what God does. Huh? You say, well, he's trying to get money. Oh, I ain't getting it. Because guess what I'm going to do with this money? I'm going to hold this money. Because I know the big God I got. Ain't that, that awesome? Isn't that awesome this morning? Yeah. Huh? Yeah. Now, you come out, you want to hug. We can't so far off and get the hug that you need. Because he's going to take a special one to stay with you. And he got to have more than five dollars in his pocket. Okay, okay, okay. Okay. Because okay. if you want to find out, he already crazy. <laughs> We're going to at least get $29.95 for him. We can laugh, can't we? Okay. You know I'm cutting up. I know you know. Yeah, I know. But you ain't gonna get the little five dollars. So, now, this door that he has opened for us cannot be shut because God Almighty has opened it. Man might try to shut it. Listen, man might try to shut this door that we're talking about this morning in the supernatural. But man can't shut this door. Amen. Now, now I'm gonna really flip you out. The real door I'm talking about. He's right here. Yeah. You thought I was talking about a door. I am. This is the door I'm talking about. God says there's an open door this morning. I will walk in your mind in the doorways. Because you won't believe this. Nobody preaches it. But there are doorways to the mind That's that can right. be shut. And there's doorways to the mind that can be closed. Yeah. I'm telling you about the ones that God says I can open and walk through your mind and destroy every car yeah. in your mind. Yeah. That's the doorway I'm talking about this morning. Because when I see myself in the mirror, I don't see me, I see Jesus. You understand? Somebody ought to give God the glory. Say, God, thank you for the glory, God. Huh? Do you understand the doorway I'm talking about? You can, you're not fighting the devil. You're fighting your mindset that's been taught you by tradition. Come on. You cannot break tradition in this church yeah. and it will not last. That's you will get the hell beat out of you yeah. every time you open your mouth. Yeah. 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 It will not, this is the Spirit of the Lord said, it will not resonate in the kingdom of God. That's why when some people speak, the Spirit moves, some people, it dies. Amen. You cannot have funky monkeys at home. Amen. Because they will follow you. Yes. Why did I say that? Lord, I'm hungry, Lord Jesus. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Amen. This is it. He says, I've already done something in the supernatural for you. That you did not know could happen. Did you know that was going to happen? Wouldn't you call that the supernatural? Huh? Right. So, this ain't about what you can take. 
It's about what you can give. I used to have an envelope that I play music. I put my money in. Every time they go, there ain't nothing in the envelope. Could get what? My wife said, you done gave it away. I said, I gave away $1,200. Yeah. I said, wow. Well. She said, oh, everybody you talk to, you give money. Because you said, the Lord said, bless me. But guess what God does? I give, He gives. I give, He gives. I give, He gives. I support, He supports. And you ain't seen the best of it. You have not seen the best of it. But there is an open door. Can you believe that this morning? I'm going to run right through because it's already getting away from you. The Holy Spirit, in the scripture, it says the Holy Spirit knows how much strength you have. In that scripture, he knows how much strength I have because he knows how much to add to to make it happen. God knows how to make it happen. When you don't know how to make it happen, He knows how to do it. Now, the next thing, God sees that you have kept His word before Him. Let me tell you something. You can't keep your word back there. It won't produce anything. You got to keep your word before you and before God. God says, bring your word, His word. He said, watch what I do. God likes sin. Does anybody believe that this morning? Now, also in that scripture, you won't believe how many things, there's over seven things, listen to it. God also sees that you have kept His praise in His name. You have praised His name out of that scripture. Anybody see that this morning? Is this even happening to anybody? Yes. Come on now. Yes. You've got to understand who you are in Christ. I'm trying to tell you, you ain't just a loser. You ain't just trying to have it. You ain't an accident in the bedroom. You've been called by God to be something and be somebody in the kingdom of God. It don't make no difference how you got here. God sent you. Amen. You could be a one night stand, but God said it don't take a one stand because I'm standing with you. I'm learning this. There ain't no accidents with God. It's all positive. Huh? Wow. Well, let's see. He said stop. So I'm going to stop. I ain't going to do it like a lot of them. I ain't going to force it. Because if I force it, it ain't going to work. Because I ain't stupid. I know when to shut up because he got something he wanted to do. Now, everybody lift your hands right here and say, God, I need it. I need it. I, I, I think you told me, it says right here. Didn't you say you needed something from God a few days ago, a week or two ago? Was it something you needed? Was it something about your happiness? Okay. Did you get any help? Did it come yet? Has it happened yet? Okay. Lift your hand. God says he wants to give you more. In Jesus' name, I declare a blessing upon my sister and I decree it. In Jesus' name. Everything she needs to do what she needs to do, God, it will be supplied by the Spirit of the Lord and in the Holy Ghost. And nobody will take advantage of what she has. In Jesus' name. Everybody say it now. Hallelujah. Give me a hand, sis. Praise God. Now this one. Wow. Wow, I feel holy. Help me to plug into this one. Wow, I feel the Spirit of the Lord. 